Atoms in solids have fixed positions. In crystalline materials, such as metals, they are arranged irregularly. Although the atoms have fixed positions, they're not stationary, they're not still. They vibrate due to thermal energy. If we raise the temperature of the material, the atoms vibrate much more. This is how the thermal energy is absorbed. If the temperature is raised further, the bonds between the atoms will be broken apart. The breaking apart of the bonds is what happens when a material melts. The breaking of these bonds requires a substantial amount of energy. It is this that we call the latent heat of melting. The word latent is used because it seems to be a hidden amount of energy. It's energy which does not raise the temperature of the material, it just changes the solid to a liquid. Once the bonds are broken, the atoms, or small groups of atoms which are molecules, move around randomly. They may take up a little more space, but the increase in volume is likely to be small. The atoms are held together by mutual attractions. If we continue to heat the liquid, the molecules will move around faster and faster. Some molecules will have enough energy to break free of the bonds and move away. This is evaporation. At the point where a very large number of molecules have sufficient energy to break the bonds of mutual attraction, the liquid is boiling. The energy required for the molecules to pull away from each other against these attractive forces is considerable, as is the energy to push away the atmosphere that surrounds the liquid. The total energy required to change a liquid into a gas is called the latent heat of vaporization. We can use a very simple experimental demonstration to estimate the latent heat of vaporization of water. We make sure that the water in the kettle is boiling and that the whole of the kettle is hot. We quickly transfer the kettle to a digital balance and measure the mass. You can see here 1.716 kilograms. Quickly transferring the kettle back to its stand, we switch it on and hold down the trip switch so that it continues to boil. The power consumption varies but I estimate the average is 2,640 watts. The power consumption is measured on a watt meter, which is monitored by a separate camera. The kettle continues to boil for a minute, the vapor escaping into the atmosphere. At the end of the minute, we let the kettle switch off, transfer it back to the digital balance, and measure the mass once more. As you can see, it's fallen to 1.656 kilograms. Using the values that we took during the experiment, my estimated value of the power was 2,640 watts. The energy provided in 60 seconds will be 60 times 2,640, 158,400 joules. Subtracting the final mass from the initial mass gives us the 0 0.060 kilograms of liquid water converted to vapour. The latent heat of a material is expressed as the amount of energy required to convert one kilogram from one state to another. Therefore we need to divide the total energy we supplied by the mass evaporated. The value we calculate of 2.64 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram is significantly higher than the generally accepted value of 2.26 times 10 to the 6. We would have improved our accuracy if we'd prevented heat loss by other means, for example, by lagging the kettle to avoid heat loss by conduction. Thank you for watching. Thank you.